The Lord be with you. Great to see you. Thanks for joining us tonight. As we gather tonight, remember our theme for the season of Lent has been return to the Lord. Those words of Joel bringing us back again, returning to our Lord, to his promises. Tonight, when we talk about uh, through all the readings, we're going to see returning to the kingdom of God. And that's a, a discussion that Jesus has with Pilate about him being a king. And of course, a king has a kingdom. And that's the whole theme of their conversation. But as you hear that tonight, one of the things that we struggle with, and I learned from one of my professors, is when we hear king, we should be thinking something different than physical kingdom. When we hear kingdom, we should be thinking reign. Not reign from the sky, but God continues to reign over us. And when we start thinking about it that way, when Jesus is our king that reigns over us, it takes all of the geographical things out of the picture. And we see that he reigns with us and over us wherever we are. So that's what we'll be looking at tonight through the readings. Uh, the order is printed for you in your bulletin this evening. It is the order of Vespers. Please stand. O oh Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me. For the sake of your goodness, O Lord, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with hymn number 891.
Testament reading comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 53. Who has believed what they heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from 1 Timothy chapter 2. We read, First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. For this I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. O Lord, have mercy on us.
the Holy Gospel for our fifth Lenten devotion this evening from the book of John, the 18th chapter. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside and said to them, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the words that Jesus had spoken, to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I would not be delivered over to the Jews, but my kingdom is not from this world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. O Lord, have mercy on us. Deliver me, O Lord, my God, for you are the God of my salvation. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Leave me not, O Lord, my God. Deliver me, O Lord, my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Please be seated. In the name of Jesus, amen. Will you pray with me? Father in heaven, we thank you again for this evening, and we thank you that your kingdom has come among us, that you continue to rule and reign in our world. Strengthen us, Father, and help us to return to your ruling over us that we might trust in you in all things. Open our hearts and our ears now to the truth of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. In the middle of Wisconsin, in the middle of the night, a pastor is summoned to the nursing home. As he goes in, one of his members is there dying. The family has asked him to come in and do a service called the Commendation for the Dying. It's a wonderful service where those who are gathered confess the Christian faith. They confess the Apostles' Creed. They confess their sins. They hear God's word. And then at the end, this one that they love, they commend that person to God's care. The family is there. The pastor is there. They tell stories. They give thanks for the life. And they entrust this saint to God's care. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Welcome to the reign of God. A young mother steps tentatively into the church lobby in a small congregation in western Kansas. She walks in not knowing anyone. The only thing she knows is she has got a notice that they're going to shut off her electricity. 
She walks in and someone from the church befriends her right there, gets to know her, hear her story, and that dear saint invites her in to fellowship and then to worship. They exchange phone numbers, and then after that, that dear saint goes down and pays her electric bill so that she might continue on. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Welcome to the reign of God. A homeless man is found sleeping on the steps right in front of the doors of the church. In early morning on Sunday when the elder comes to open everything up and get ready for worship, he sees the man there, he wakes him up, he hears his story. The man says he's homeless, he hasn't eaten in a long time. And the elder brings him in and takes him into the kitchen and finds whatever's there for a makeshift meal. Helps him get cleaned up, invites him to come in and worship, talks to him about the hope and the forgiveness we have in Jesus. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Welcome to the reign of God as he works in our world and in all of the people that are gathered around us. On Sunday morning and this evening after we get done with our order of service, we gather here in this semicircle around this rail and your Savior comes to you and feeds you. Take and eat, this is my body. Take and drink, this is my blood of the new covenant given and shed for you. Your king comes to you and gives you forgiveness of sins. Gives you his own body for you. Forgives you. Encourages you. Picks you up and brushes you off. And sets you on a course back into the world. Encouraged and strengthened. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Welcome to the reign of God as he comes among us and he gives us his gifts. What does it mean to be in the kingdom of God? That's the question that we're asking tonight. Pilate struggles with understanding it. This is the gospel tonight. And it can be heard for us who actually are the kingdom of God. We are the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God are those in whom our Lord gives his good gifts. The kingdom of God are those who gather some professionals, if you will, and others lay people. But the kingdom of God comes and gives his gifts to all his people. Our sermon series for this year has been return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents of disaster. We've seen our own sinfulness, but we've also seen and heard how God continues to pursue us. He continues to encourage us. He continues to forgive us and give us his gifts. Tonight, the invitation for us is return to the Lord your God, return to his kingdom. And that's where our readings have gone for tonight. That's where we hear Jesus talking to Pilate. We hear the phrase kingdom of God and we tend to relate that image back to a place. Maybe the kingdom of God is confined right here to the walls of the church where our Lord meets us here at this altar. But he does his most visible and obvious work here. But certainly, the work of our Father, the work of our God, is not confined by these walls. God is certainly not limited by this place. Perhaps the kingdom of God follows the pastor around as I go to the shut-ins and I take my individual communion kits and I give them communion in their homes or in the place where they live. That doesn't seem right either, though, that the kingdom of God would just be confined to the work of a pastor. You have all heard the stories, as I have, of pastors who have fallen from grace and embarrassed themselves, scandalized their congregations and their communities with human failures. No, the kingdom of God can't be centered on the work of the pastor. What if the kingdom of God is purely heavenly? And we wait for that time when our Lord takes us home to be with him. And the kingdom of God there will finally be revealed to us and we'll see Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we'll see the kingdom of heaven. Well, that doesn't fit either because our Lord came into our world. 
conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, grew up in a household, played and lived and was taught, was baptized, became a rabbi and taught, and continued to point people to the kingdom of God through the forgiveness of sins. No, the kingdom of God isn't simply a heavenly place either. The kingdom of God is in every place where Jesus is. Every place where Jesus gives us his gifts. Every place where we find comfort and hope in the words and the promises of Jesus. The chief priests in the readings for tonight turn Jesus over to the Roman government on Friday morning. Their intention was clear. This man has to die. Pilate tried to de-escalate the situation, but he was backed into a corner. So he brought Jesus in and he asked him the question right up front. Are you the king of the Jews? Pilate asked, and this was no ideal question, no, no small question. Pilate clearly understood what the chief priests had been up to. They, he had a pretty good idea that they had turned Jesus over to him, that he might see that Jesus was killed. Best to get right to the point. So Pilate asked the question straight up. But Jesus can't just answer a question like that. He could, but Pilate certainly wouldn't understand it. Pilate would understand a king and a kingdom in a very physical way. And Jesus King has a kingdom that is not of this world. But Jesus can't just answer the question straight up. He continues to help Pilate so that Pilate might understand. Pilate has a particular understanding of what it means to be a king. And Jesus' kingship doesn't fit into any of Pilate's categories. He couldn't just admit that he's, excuse me, he could admit that he's a king. But Pilate wouldn't understand that either. He might just think that Jesus was vying for power, trying to find a position, or trying to push someone else out of power. But that wasn't it either. He's a king of a whole different plane. Jesus probes Pilate. Did you come up with this question on your own, or did somebody tell you to ask it? Pilate's in no mood to play. He isn't listening. He doesn't want to play games with Jesus. Listen, I'm not only a Jew, and frankly, I don't care who the king of the Jews may be, but you've rubbed somebody the wrong way, and that's why you're here. And Pilate wanted to get to the, to the heart of the issue. Pilate wanted to help Jesus, and he wanted Jesus to give him some understanding of what it meant and if he was a king. Jesus tries his best to explain to this man who doesn't have a grasp who Jesus is and who doesn't understand why Jesus is standing in front of him. It's not a kingdom like you would imagine. If it were, Jesus' followers would be fighting for him. They would be defending him. They would be trying to put together a coup to put Jesus in place. But Jesus' kingdom is not like the kingdom that Pilate has. Because it's not that kind of kingdom, it's something else. It's something bigger. It's something much more important. Pilate chews on that for a minute, and then he says back to Jesus, So you are a king. And Jesus' answer is terrific. You say that I am a king. Which is a little like Jesus answering him, Now you're starting to get it. But then Jesus goes on to explain that he is the kind of king who has come into this world to point folks to something more important than has ever been understood before. Jesus came to bear witness to the truth. And if you get it, if you get the truth, everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice, Jesus says. At that point, Pilate finally gives up. But you don't, we don't, because we know the truth. We know that Jesus is the king that has come into this world to give us hope, to walk with us in our sorrows, to strengthen us in our troubles, 
And most importantly, to forgive our sins so that we may rest with him on that final day. As we went through all of those scenarios at the beginning of the message, I saw several of you nodding, understanding, you know what the kingdom of God looks like. You know that when you sat with your loved one and you hear the words from Jesus' very lips, that even though you die, you will rise again. You understand that. This message that we hear tonight, the kingdom of God, is not about geographical boundaries. It's not about particular groups of people. The kingdom of God is about Jesus. It's about the work of the Holy Spirit. It's about a loving God who invites, forgives, encourages, and builds us up. The kingdom of God exists wherever the loving activity of God is playing out. In a hospital room, visiting with someone who had a stroke. That's where I was this afternoon. Giving that person Holy Communion, reminding them that their sins are forgiven and that their Savior still knows them and loves them and will be with them through all their burdens. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Welcome to the reign of God and the comfort that he gives to this woman struggling with health issues. The kingdom of God is right there in the midst of the drug rehab house where the drug addict is finally at its lowest point and receives help and finally begins to get the burdens and the demons that control him under control. Welcome to the kingdom of God. When that person finally realizes that they can't do it on their own, that all of their running away won't help deal with the problem. The kingdom of God is when high school students gather around the flagpole in the morning and pray for their teachers and their friends, and they know that God hears. The kingdom of God is here tonight. As you hear his word preached to you, as you take comfort in the promises that your Savior is with you, as you hear his word to return back to the kingdom of God again, and you promise to do better, to hear more, to be in the word more. God calls us all to be part of his reign and his rule, to witness the work that he is doing in our midst and to participate in it, to play the role of his hands and his feet as you love your neighbor, as you take care of the one next to you. God invites us to be a part of this kingdom. He does the work of saving. He does the work of faithing. But he gives us this great opportunity to be in with him, giving the good news and sharing it with those around us. That's the kingdom of God. And it's been given to all of us to share this wonderful news with those who we are close to. Return to the kingdom. Return to his gifts. And tonight when you leave, take them with you and give them to your neighbor and your family, and your friends, and let them see the hope and the promise that you have. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now the peace that passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
at the crown that he wore and the cross that he bore were his own. The cross was his own. Please stand as we continue with the canticle. Let my prayer rise before you as incense. You may be seated. We continue with our passion reading for the fifth week of Lent, and it's entitled Calvary. The soldiers now had charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out of the city to a place called Skull Hill, in Hebrew, Golgotha. As they led him away, they laid hold of Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus, who was coming in from the country. On him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. 
Following him was a great company of people and of women who bewailed and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. The days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breast that never gave suck. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do these things with a green tree, what will happen with a dry one? There were also two others, criminals whom they led along to be put to death with him. When they came to the place called Golgotha, they gave him wine mingled with gall to drink, but when he tasted, he tasted, he would not drink it. It was the third hour, and there they crucified him. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The two criminals they also crucified with him, one on his right, the other on his left, with Jesus in the middle. The scripture was then fulfilled, which says, and he was numbered with the transgressors. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they cast lots to divide his clothes and decide what each should take. They made four parts, one for each soldier. There remained his tunic, which was without seam, woven in one piece from the top to the bottom. They said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to decide who shall have it. The scripture was thus fulfilled, which says, They divided my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. These things the soldiers did, and sitting down they kept watch over him there. Over his head was put the charge against him. Pilate wrote the notice to be put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. This title was read by many of the Jews for the place where Jesus was crucified was near to the city and it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. The chief priest of the Jews then said to Pilate, you should not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. People stood by watching. Those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, now come down from the cross that we may see and believe. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. The thieves who were crucified with him also reviled him. And one of the criminals who hung there with him railed at him, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are getting what we deserve for what we have done. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Near to the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to his disciple, Behold the mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? When some of them that were standing there heard it, they said, He is calling for Elijah. After this, Jesus knew that all things were accomplished. Fulfilling the scripture, he said, I thirst. There was a jar of wine standing there. One of them ran immediately to get a sponge. 
He filled it with wine, put it on a reed, held it up to his mouth and gave it to him to drink. Others said, wait and see if Elijah will come and save him. When Jesus had received the wine, he cried out with a loud voice, it is finished. Then he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he died, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. All the people who had gathered to see the sight when they saw what had happened turned away beating their breasts. Those who had known him stood at a distance, as also the woman who had followed him from Galilee. Among them was Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and the younger and of Joseph, and Salome the mother of the sons of Zebedee. It was the day of preparation before the Sabbath, and this was the Passover Sabbath. Therefore, so that the bodies should not remain on the crosses during the Sabbath, the Jews asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies removed. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. One who saw it is our witness, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth that you also may believe. These things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. Not one of his bones shall be broken. And again, another scripture says, They shall look on him whom they pierced. By this time evening had come. A respected member of the council, Joseph of Arimathea, was one who was looking for the kingdom of God, a good and righteous man who had not consented to their purpose indeed. He was a disciple of Jesus secretly, for he feared the Jews. Now he took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was astonished that he could be dead already. He called for the centurion and asked him whether Jesus was already dead. When he was assured by the centurion that it was so, Pilate granted Joseph the corpse and commanded that it be given over to him. Joseph bought fine linen and came and took the body of Jesus. Nicodemus came also, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. It was he who had first come to Jesus by night. They then took the body of Jesus and wrapped it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb where no one had ever been buried. Joseph laid the body in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock, and rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and departed. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, were sitting there opposite the sepulcher and saw where he was laid. Then they t returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath day, they rested according to the commandment. On the next day, the day after their preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees went together to Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command that the sepulcher be made secure until the third day to stop his disciples from coming and stealing him and saying to the people, he has risen from the dead, making the final deception worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go and make it as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. Thus, thus ends the Passion reading. Please stand for prayer.
Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by his death you have brought us to your holy hill, and by his resurrection you have justified us in your sight. Lead us by the light and truth of your holy word that we may ever be vindicated in Christ and win the victory over all enemies of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, Heavenly Father, give wisdom and strength to all fathers in the home and church. Make them faithful in teaching your word to the children and trust to their care that these little ones would come to know you as their Heavenly Father and live as true children of God. Bless Matthew, our Synod President, Scott, our District President, John, our Circuit Visitor, Randy, our Pastor in Christ, and Dennis, our Vicar, Trinity Lutheran Church in Belfouche, and Evergreen Lutheran Church in Pine Ridge. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, our, hear, O Lord, our prayers for all civil authorities, especially Joseph, our president, and Christy, our governor. Preserve our nation in peace and allow your people to live quiet and peaceable lives in godliness and honesty. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, because of our sins, we are not worthy to pray to you, yet in your mercy, you receive our prayers through the intercession of Jesus Christ, our great high priest. Hear our supplications for those in need. We pray for Debbie Berge and Marilyn and Susan and family. We, we lift up John and Fawn Harmon and family, Maria and family, Davis and Abby. We pray for Ron and Judy, Derek and Alexis and family, Walt, Mary and Bill, Eldon and family, Steve and Yvonne, Tracy, Lindsay and Cindy, Tegan, Martin, we pray for Vonda, Linda, Rachel, Dale, Mike, Alex, Jim, and Sue. We lift up to you tonight Joanne, Jeff, Connie, Faith, Colleen, Colleen and all with concerns. Answer our petitions on account of the merits and mediation of your Son, our Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, keep us steadfast in your word that we may not be deceived by that liar and murderer, the devil, but know your truth and so come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Trusting in your promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer. Ever-present God, stay with us, for darkness has come and the day is now past. Forgive, we pray, both our neglect in doing good this day and the wrongs we have done. Awaken us in the morning, bathed in the light of our baptism, so that we will be ready to love and serve you and our neighbor. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. 
Please be seated. Well, good evening. Great to see you. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, Vicar, if you'd like to prepare the supper, we'll um, uh, set for Holy Communion and invite you all to the rail, and we'll receive the very body and blood of Christ here in just a moment. Uh, just a couple of announcements as we go forward next week. Wednesday night next week, no family night, no confirmation, things like that, but we will be showing the movie The Passion of the Christ. That's a Mel Gibson production. Uh, it has a pretty good understanding of Christ and the suffering that he went through, although it is a motion picture and it, it has some things that aren't true that we'll unpack just a little bit after that. So uh, it is graphic. It has an R rating for the violence of the crucifixion scene of Jesus. Keep that in mind. So 6.30 next Wednesday night, we'll be gathering in the fellowship hall to watch that. And then our Holy Week activities begin. Monday, Thursday, as well as Good Friday, an 11 a.m. service, and then 7.15. And then Easter Vigil, that's an evening service that will be outside. Only one service on Easter Saturday or Holy Saturday. That'll start outside, and then we make our way in with the light of Christ. And then that brings us to Sunday morning, 6.30 for the first service, and then 9 o'clock for the second, and then we're serving Easter breakfast in between that. And we'd love to have you come and join us for that. If you remember a year ago, we were all gathered in our houses trying to figure out how we're going to do Easter without actually being together. This year, we can gather, and what a great celebration that will be. Uh, so we would enjoy, invite you to join us for all of those things. Go in his peace. And we will set the table and wait uh, to join you in a second. <laughs> 